conjunction with the response of prayer in the hymnal. So page 285, we will go through response of prayer 2, and then I will have the kids come up here after we do the creed. So page 285 again. And let's stand. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your grace. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. And you can be seated. I'll read the lesson that we'll have Sunday. From Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then we'll rise and continue with the Kyrie. O Lord, O Christ, O oh Lord, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Okay, so this year's examination, and we will begin with the first of the six chief parts of the Catechism, the commandments. So, Kelvin, the first commandment with meaning. You shall have no other gods. What does this mean? We should fear, love, and trust in God above all things. All right, Isaac, who is the only true God? The only true God is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three distinct beings in one, one three, three distinct... Three. Persons in one divine being. And recite the second commandment. 
You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. We should fear love God so that we do not curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name, but call upon it in every trouble, pray, praise, and give thanks. All right, Kelvin, how is God's name misused? God's name is misused when people speak God's name uselessly or carelessly, when we curse, swear, use satanic arts, lie, or deceive by his name. Lucas, the third commandment. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. What does it mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise preaching and his word, but hold it sacred and gladly hear and learn it. And when do we sin against the third commandment? We sin against the third commandment when we despise preaching in the word of God. Isaac, how is this done? We despise preaching in the word of God when we do not attend public worship, when we do not use the word of God in the sacraments, when we use the word of God in the sacraments negligently or carelessly. Calvin, the fourth commandment. Honor your father and mother. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not despise or anger our parents or other authorities, but honor them, serve and obey them, love and cherish them. Who are parents and other authorities? Parents are fathers, mothers, and guardians. Other authorities are all those whom God has placed over us at home, in the government, at, the, at church, at school, at the place where we work, and in the church. Lucas, fifth commandment. Shall not murder. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not hurt or harm our neighbor in his body, but help and support him in every physical need. And what does God forbid in the fifth commandment? Hey, God forbids us to take the life of another person, murder, abortion, euthanasia, or take our own life, suicide. B, God forbids us to hurt or harm our neighbor physically. That is to say or do something that may destroy, shorten, or make his or her life bitter. C, God forbids us God forbids us to hold anger or hatred in our heart against our neighbor. And sixth commandment. You should not commit adultery. What does this mean? We should fear love God so that we lead a sexually pure and decent life in what we say and do, and husband and wife love and honor each other. What does God forbid in the sixth commandment? God forbids divorce except for marital unfaithfulness, adultery or desertion. God forbids sexual intercourse between unmarried persons. God forbids sexual sins such as rape, homosexuality, incest, sexual child abuse, obscenity, and the use of pornographic materials. God forbids sexually impure thoughts and desires. Seventh commandment. You shall not steal. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not take our neighbor's money or possessions or get them in any, dis any dishonest way, but help him to improve and protect his possessions and income. And where does God tell us that our possessions are to be used for the good of others and the witness of his love for us? In 1 John 3.17, God says, If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Eighth commandment. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbor, neighbor, betray him, slander him, or hurt his reputation. But defend him, speak well of him, and explain everything in the kindest of way. What does God require of us in the Eighth Commandment? A, we, sh we should defend our neighbor. That is, we should speak up for and protect our neighbor from false accusations. B, we should speak, speak well of our neighbor. That is, we should praise our neighbor's good actions and qualities. C, we should, we should put the best meaning on everything. That is, we should explain our neighbor's actions and qualities in the best possible way. Isaac, Ninth Commandment. You should not covet your neighbor's house. We should. What does this mean? We should fear love God so that we do not scheme to get our neighbor's inheritance or house or get it in a way which only appears right, but help him to and be, and be of service in him in keeping it. And what does God require of us in the ninth commandment? We should be content with what, with what God has given us and assist our neighbor in keeping what God has given them. Calvin, tenth commandment. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his manservant or maidservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. What does this mean? We should fear and love God so that we do not entice or force away at our neighbor's wife, workers, or animals, or turn them against him, but urge them to stay and do their duties. What is original sin? Original sin is that total corruption of our whole human nature that we have inherited from Adam through our parents. What is actual sin? Actual sin is every act against the commandment of God in thoughts, desires, words, or deeds. Part two of the six chief parts, the creed. Together, recite the first article of the creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. What does this mean? 
I believe that God has made me and all creatures, that he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason, and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all I have. He richly and daily provides me with what I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me from all evil. All this he does out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. For this is my duty to think and praise, serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Isaac, how did God first create life? God created all living things, both plant and animal, by his word alone from nothing. He created humanity, especially from dust, and gave us his own breath as life. Does the Bible allow for evolution? No, Hebrews 11.3 says, By faith we understand the universe was formed at God's command, and what is seen is not made out of what is visible. What was the image of God that Adam and Eve once had? The image of God was this. Adam and Eve truly knew God, how God wishes to be known, and were perfectly happy in Him. They were righteous and holy, doing, good, doing God's will. Right, the second article, together. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. And the third day He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father before eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death, and from the power of the devil. Not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and his innocent sufferings and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom, serving him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Isaac, how do you know that Jesus Christ is true God? Because the scriptures clearly call him God, teaching the following. Jesus has divine names. Jesus has divine attributes. Jesus does divine works. Jesus receives divine honor and glory. Why was it necessary for our Savior to be true man? Christ had to be true man in order to take our place under the law to fulfill it for us. Be able to suffer and die for our guilt because we failed to keep the law. How does this work of redemption benefit you? Christ is my substitute. He takes my place under the judgment of God against sins by paying the penalty for my guilt. Christ atoned, yeah, atoned or made satisfaction for my sins. All right, together the third article. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, and sanctified and kept me in the one truth. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers in Christ. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give the eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Isaac, where is this holy Christian church to be found? The holy Christian church is to be found where the gospel is preached in its purity and the holy sacraments are administered according to the gospel. What do the scriptures teach about our life in the church? They teach that we should seek always to be and remain members of the invisible church, Christ's body, by sincere faith in Christ our Savior. We should be faithful to that visible church or denomination which professes and teaches all the Bible's doctrine purely and administers the sacrament according to Christ's institution. 
We should avoid false churches, we should avoid false teachers, false churches, and all organizations that promote a religion that is contrary to God's word. We should maintain and extend God's church by telling others about Jesus Christ, by personal service, and by prayer and financial support. What moves God to forgive sins? God forgives sins because he's merciful and because of Christ's atoning satis um, sa sacrifice for all sinners. All right, now that section of the Catechism dealing with the Lord's Prayer. Together, the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. To whom should we pray? We should pray to the true God only, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit not to idols, saints, or anything God has created. How should we pray? We should pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that is, with faith in him as our Redeemer, with confidence, that is, with, with firm trust that for Christ's sake our prayers will be answered according to God's revealed will. Now, the section in the Catechism dealing with baptism. Why are babies to be baptized? Babies are to be baptized because Babies are included in the words all nations. Matthew 28, 19. Go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Jesus especially invites little children to come to them. As sinners, babies need what baptism offers. Babies are also able to have faith. What great and precious things are given in baptism? Baptism works for forgiveness of sins, rescues from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation. Does the Bible specifically say that baptism forgives sins? Yes, at several places like Acts 2, 38 through 39, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for you and your children. Acts 22, 16, get up, be baptized, and wash your sins away. To the section of the Catechism dealing with the Office of the Keys. Lucas, how should we regard the absolution spoken by the pastor? We should receive the absolution spoken by the pastor as from God himself, not doubting but firmly believing that by it our sins are forgiven before God in heaven. What special authority has Christ given to his church on earth? Christ has given to his church the authority to forgive sins or to withhold forgiveness. Why is this authority called the Office of the Keys? This authority works like a key by opening heaven by forgiving sins or to close heaven by not forgiving them. Whose sins are to be forgiven? Those who repent and ask for forgiveness are to be forgiven. Whose sins are not to be forgiven? Unrepentant sinners, that, that is, those who are not sorry for their sins and do not believe in Jesus Christ are not to be forgiven as long as they do not repent. And the section then on the Catechism dealing with the Lord's Supper. Calvin, what does Christ give us in this sacrament? In this sacrament, Christ gives us his own true body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins. How does the Bible make it clear that these words of Christ are not picture language? Christ's words in the sacrament must be taken face value, especially because the, these words are the words of a testament. Any ordinary person's last will and testament may not be changed once that person has died. God's word, clearly teaches, God, yeah, God's word clearly teaches that in the sacrament, the bread and wine are communion or participation in the body and blood of Jesus Christ. God's word clearly teaches that anyone who misuses the sacraments sin not against bread and wine, but against Christ's body and blood. How are we to examine ourselves before receiving the sacrament? We are to examine ourselves to see whether we are sorry for our sins. We believe in our Savior, Jesus Christ, and his words in the sacrament. We plan with the help of the Holy Spirit to change our sinful lives. Who must not be given this sacrament? The sacrament must not be given to the following. Those who are openly ungodly and unrepentant, including those who take part in non-Christian religious worship, those who are unforgiving, refusing to be reconciled, they are to show that they do thereby not really believe that God forgives them either. Those of a different confession of faith, since the Lord's Supper is a testimony of unity of faith. Those who are unable to examine themselves, 
such as infants, those who have not been properly instructed, or the unconscious. What is the benefit offered in this sacrament? The chief blessing of the sacrament is forgiveness of sins, which was, which by, which by Christ's body and blood was won for us on the cross. Together with forgiveness, God gives, God gives other blessing, other blessings, as so that is life and salvation. In the sacrament, in the sacrament Christ gives victory over all sins over all sins and hell for and strength for the new life in him. Um, as Christian as Christians partake in the sacraments together, they make solemn public confessions of Christ of Christ and of unity in the in the one in the truth of his of his gospel. Why are we to receive the sacrament often? We are to receive the sacrament often because Christ commands or urgently invites us, saying, This do in remembrance of me. His words given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins promise and offer us great blessings. We need the forgiveness of our sins and strength for a new and holy life. And finally, can you be sure you are saved? Yes, because my salvation depends on Christ's perfect work in me, for me, because he gives me his grace and forgiveness through his word, words and sacrament. Right. You have completed your examination. You can return to your pews. Let's uh, stand and we'll continue then with the versicles on page 286. Hear my prayer, O Lord. In the day of my trouble, I call upon you. Hide your face from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Cast me not away from your presence. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Because your steadfast love is better than life. My lips will praise you. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. Teach me your way, O Lord, that I may walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. I give thanks to you, O Lord, my God, with my whole heart. And I will glorify your name forever. May all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say evermore, God is great. Save your people and bless your heritage. Be your shepherd and carry your heart. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. And let us pray. Let's pray together the prayer for evening. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commit myself, my body and soul in all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless us, defend us from all evil, and bring us to everlasting life.